Hey, it's Shelva Meyerson with Yoga Athletica in Los Angeles, California, here today to teach you Niralamba Sharvangasana, which is our unsupported shoulder stand. Now, if you've watched my videos long enough, you know no matter what the question, the answer is core. So, of course, we're going to start out by learning how to engage our core more efficiently in our shoulder stand. We'll start with Shalamba Sharvangasana, which is our supported shoulder stand. Now, before I begin, let me emphasize you never, as in ever, want to turn your head when you're in a shoulder stand, or really any time that you have pressure on your head or neck. And so, please don't try to do this and watch at the same time, because turning your head will really hurt your neck. Instead, watch, then do, or you can do it just by listening, but please don't turn your head, okay? That's my official disclaimer, folks. Okay, we start by lying down and coming into Halasana, plow position. So legs go up and over to the floor behind you. Now, when we're working in our Sharvangasana, either variation, it's really important that we get high onto our shoulders. So, so many people sort of rest on their upper back. Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah. Uh. We're going to get so high by scooting our elbows in towards each other and moving the hands towards the shoulder blades that every vertebra of my spine is off the floor. That means every one of them, including my full neck, my C7, and all points between above and below. Now, once I have my supported posture, my hands are somewhere in the upper lumbar region, I see if I can press into the back of my head gently, my shoulders, and into my elbows. Squeezing my legs together, I lift the legs straight and simultaneously up into the air. Most people are used to doing one leg at a time. That's not going to work your core the way this will. Here we go. Legs come down. Maybe reestablish the hands on the back. Legs together and up. Okay, so we'll just do five of these, but you can do more. Okay, squeeze your legs together. Pull up from your hips. Legs high. Two more. I bring it down. And up. It's sort of like an upside down leg lift, right? Simple core action. And one more time. Straight and simultaneously up into the air. Now every time we come out of a shoulder stand, it's always Halasana first, and I roll out. There might be a Karnapidasana in there, but that even comes with the Halasana first too. So, if that's all Sanskrit to you, don't worry, it's not that important. I said that you might put your, bend your knees, basically, after you take your feet to the floor, or you may not. Okay, pick your poison. Okay. Once you've got that one, the straight and simultaneous lift, we take it to the next step, which is to do it with our arms on the floor instead of on our backs. Now, this isn't exactly unsupported because the floor is supporting and I'm giving some um, leverage with my arms, but it's one step beyond. So let's try that one. Once again, I lie down. Halasana. It still helps to scoot my shoulders together, even though my hands are on the floor. And see if you can, same thing, lift your legs up. They won't go quite as high, probably. And down. Notice how the tush is back behind me a lot before I start. And it sort of moves towards me as I lift, too. Really using my arms here, pressing down, squeezing from the um, legs together. Lift. So bringing my legs together gives me that mula bandha, right? That pelvic floor support. And lift. And down. And lift. And halasana. And roll it out. Okay. Great. So make sure do that because that's the basic core action that's going to help you here. Then let's take it back one notch, not really back, forward. I don't know why I said back. Well, it's back because we're going to put our hands back on our back. That's why it's back. Okay, high on your shoulders, all vertebra off the floor. Lift your legs up towards the ceiling. Now remember, shoulders. 
stand, we're looking to get as vertical as possible. Just know that in the unsupported version, the legs most likely are going to fall back to an extent. So for the next step, keep your right hand where it is on your hip and see if you can take your left hand and just, hey, hi, and then let's switch. Right hand, hey, hi, left hand, hey, right hand, hi. Okay. So now you know that it's not so very, very horrible to take away some of the support. Keep in mind on this one, quite frankly, if you fall out of this, you're basically gonna roll out like a ball. So it's certainly not the end of the world. Okay, so once we got that, let's take it a little bit deeper. Halasana, elbows in, all vertebrae off, Legs lift straight and simultaneous. Now this time, after I get my hay, reach up, see if you can give your leg a quick high five. And bring it down. Hey, right hand, high five, and down. Left hand, hey, high five, and down. Right hand, hey, high five, and down. Here we go. How are we doing so far? Not so bad, right? It's really not nearly as bad as you think. Okay, so this time, we'll try it, but with our legs further back, okay? The more vertical it is, the harder this is. So, let's do this in almost a plow. In fact, start in a plow. Can you take your arms straight up in a plow? And can you lift your legs just a little bit? And put them down? And a little bit? And down? And up, and down, up, legs are lifting straight and simultaneously, and down, and up, okay. How'd that work out? So remember that the lower the legs are, the easier this is, and again, you just sort of roll out, it's like no problem. Okay, so. This one we're going to use the wall for, um, quite frankly, it doesn't make it that much easier, it just might give you some peace of mind. So, with your head, let's say, mm, this far from the wall, what, like a foot? I take my legs up and over, this time, to the wall. And then I press my feet into the wall and see if I can reach this time both arms into the air. Now because my feet are pressing and I'm leaning into it, this is very, very manageable, okay? If my legs are just there for decoration, my butt gets very heavy and I roll out, okay? So, this is core engagement, and the closer you move to the wall, the more intense this is. So I move in closer, press, and lift. Rolling out. Let's try one more time. I move closer. <laughs> Gotta make sure I'm not gonna hit the wall here. <laughs> Legs up. Whoa. I have to point my toes this time. And talk funny. And lift. Now, <laughs> the compression in my throat made me talk like Kermit the Frog. Maybe try talking in that one and see if you talk like Kermit the Frog. Okay, so when I'm super, super close like that, try it. The closer you can get, the more you're gonna feel your core ignite, okay? So once you feel comfortable with that, and again, let me just show you what it looks like if you fall out of this so it's not scary, although you might have already done it. If I lift up, and let's say I go up, I roll out like this, okay? As long as you keep your spine round and don't flip out and flatten out your back, it's like a no-brainer and it really is hard to hurt yourself in this one. I'm not going to go so far as to say impossible because there's always going to be someone who's going to tell me that they broke their back in this one. I hope it's not you. Just make sure that you feel like you're falling, round your spine. You'll roll out like a ball. Okay, let's take this together. Legs go back. Elbows in, 
Get high, high, high on my shoulders. Both legs straight and simultaneously. Lift up into the air. Now this time, can you take both hands off your back? But your arms are still down. So you can gesticulate when you talk. Okay, lift back up. Again, hands are off the back. Okay, let's take this all the way. This time, hands come up and press into your shoulders as you extend your arms up into the air, hands by your legs. Try to keep, if you can, a little space between your chin and your chest by moving your legs away from your body as much as possible. There's weight like in the back of my head a bit to keep me stabilized. When I'm ready to come down, I roll it out. Okay. Sort of cool. Sometimes I find this one, quite honestly, easier than the full version, or I should say the supported version. Okay. Let's talk about getting this into our lotus position in shoulder stand. Because I think that this one is the easiest one, I mean it is, of the inversions to get your legs in because you get to actually use your hands. So, from here, from my plow position, elbows in, way up on my shoulders, and lift my legs, straighten simultaneously. Now watch this, I can start with just one hand. Remember this one? So I lean to my right, in this arm, I'm leaning with my left foot. I can take my foot and pull it to the crease of my hip. Now, in order to get this right leg on this side, I want to get my left leg closer to the line of my right leg. So I push my left leg back. Then my right leg, I can reach up with my left hand and pull it in. At which point, my hands can grab my knees. Now you could just come straight out of this if you take your time, keeping a little bit of core control here. Back into your halasana plow and rolling out. Okay. I'm going to try to show it facing that direction, even though there's a wall right here. Let's see how, how I could do this and still stay on the screen. Let's move this back a little bit. Hmm. Okay, so I'm going to have to come into this a little oddly. <coughs> okay. Oh, by the way, if you can't do shoulder stand, you could always just press into the wall like this and lift up, huh? Or if you don't have room. So again, my leg comes in, and remember that the closer it is to the hip crease, this goes for all lotuses, the easier it is to bind. So I can pull my foot down as my knee pulls back away from my body. I'm still supporting with this right hand. My right leg comes, I pull it down with my left hand, and then I push my arms straight into my knees. Now of course, you could do it also from legs straight, I mean from arms all the way in the air, you just pull in, Pull in, and boom. Okay, I'm going to try to come out of this without breaking the wall. Done. Okay, how'd you do? I simply love this pose. For reasons I can't fully explain, I do find it easier than the supported variation and easier to hold. The thing has to do with my wrists. I hope you enjoy it too. This is Shauna Meyerson with Yoga Athletica in Los Angeles, California, wishing you an awesome day.